hope you have. We're actually in a collaboration space. We're in a whole bunch of different spaces. Honestly, I've not had enough time to go through because I want to talk to you guys. But I'm going to learn a little bit more and cheat, and that's what you guys get to do because we're here. Is so allow me to introduce my guest. I'm Shree. Um, I'm not going to say your last name because I'll probably mess it up. But Shree, you are in charge of uh, well, we're going to talk about huddle spaces, but describe what is your title and responsibility? Rob, Sri Srinivasan, SVP GM for WebEx Teams Meetings and Devices. Okay, excellent. So I love the fact that we're like, it seems like everywhere in Cisco, we're bringing things closer together. But specifically, this term huddle spaces was not one I'm completely familiar with, but then when you describe it to me, I go, Okay, I probably get it. I should have thought of this, but why don't you explain what do you mean by huddle spaces? How is that important? So, as you know, Rob, the modern workplace is transforming at a rapid pace. Uh, open offices are giving room to open layouts, cubicles are coming in, and as agile takes uh, root in the modern enterprise, you're you're seeing every space being converted into a team space. So, small spaces, even the water cooler becomes a huddle space. So any place where you huddle around and ideate is now a huddle space. Okay, so if I were to translate that, and I want you to correct me if I get it wrong, but one notion I might think of it is, is work is going to happen where work needs to happen. We want technology, well, we'll get to that point in a second, but the idea is it's going to happen where it happens. We need to be thinking about how we enable uh, that work to happen, no matter where it is, so that you're not following the technology, per se. Am I getting that right? And, and then I'll let you add on to this. What kind, of do, what kind of things are we doing from a technology perspective to enable this? So uh, let's talk about the problems itself, right? Oh, so in a sense, we are now enabling a new medium of collaboration, video. The workforce is global. We're building for a global diaspora. And increasingly, the workforce is from across the globe. Now, the act of huddling is not only co-location, but it's across the globe. You're huddling with three people, and the fourth person is 12 time zones away. So video becomes a communication medium, and there's a whole bunch of problems with video. There's a bunch of hacked together solutions out there, lots of wires, management interfaces, things like Zoom rooms, which require four management interfaces, 16 wires, and you have to stand on your head to make it work, right? So you need simple solutions. We all need simple solutions where the water cooler becomes digital, where the act of innovation and co-creation becomes just brain dead simple. That's funny, because I, I have to share this with you because I forgot to bring this up ahead of time, so forgive me. But I had a little bit, I worked for a partner before Cisco, and we were a room integrator. Um, and we worked with, Polycom was an upstart back then, I know we're not here to talk about them, but uh, PictureTel, uh, we made a ton of money as an integrator building these huge picture tell rooms that required multiple engineers on site. Um, there was a big uh, goods company out of Ohio that I, I had, uh, was the account manager for. Uh, but the whole idea was, and it's amazing how much video continues to get more accessible, but we're not necessarily making the meetings easier and the idea of, well, what's the end reason that we're using that video and the other tools? Because that's really where the focus needs to be, correct? Yeah, the, the focus needs to be collaboration. The focus needs to be video is a mechanism by which you know, whether you're co-located or whether you're a global workforce, you get the exact same experience. Now, what we're doing at Cisco is bringing a new lineup of products beyond what we've done in the meeting rooms called as Huddle Spaces. So it starts with the share, beautiful little, little device, like a Chromecast, Google dongle, only better, it's meetings enabled. So a remote participant can share, you can just convert any TV into an intelligent meetings device. So sharing content becomes that simple. Now the second device we have is a RoomKit Mini, right here in the back. Okay. Beautiful little thing, packed with technology. The best line I can use is personal choice for the end users with centralized control for IT. It's powerful. Ability for you to scale it across the enterprise, whether you're using the RoomKit Mini, the Room Series, or the large meeting room, you get the same manageability experience, no wires. And this beautiful thing has 120 degree field of view. So in a small, constricted space, you get everybody in the room. Yeah. It's, it's quite awesome in terms of technology. Voice enabled, you can just talk to it. Germaphones, you don't need to touch any of the stuff on the meeting room. Some of us yeah. are, right? 
I believe you were, you were telling me something, and especially with this, which looks like it's probably going to be another device I need to add to my travel bag, because uh, I find myself in Cisco offices all around the world, and, and customer offices, partners, and, and now all of a sudden I'm like, I have access to this incredible uh, meeting space so much more easily, and you were saying now, because I, I, I was impressed when we were doing presence from a device, it activates the system, but you're talking about just your physical presence, you come into a room, you, t you say nothing, and your voice interaction is now engaging the meeting and everything you need, for us germaphobes or whomever, I like it regardless. I'm not a germaphobe, but I like the idea of that. Is that. Am I getting that right? Yes, absolutely. So voice enabling makes it easier. Oftentimes we run late into meetings. You just walk into a meeting says, join, join my meeting. And better yet, sometimes we walk into a meeting room, we forget that we have to join. Yeah. This device will prompt you, proactively tells you, hey, there's a bunch of people waiting, would you like to join my, your meeting? It recognizes you, AI, the power of AI, coming into the meeting, it recognizes you, it recognizes your meetings, and brings in context information into play. Not only information, but action related to it. So the meeting room of today is becoming digital. So whether you're in a hallway, whether you're near a water cooler, whether even a closet space can be converted into an effective meeting room. Yeah, we know this is, of course, internally at Cisco, very much like our customers, we're in meetings all day long. I mean, that's really, Unfortunately, it's how work gets done, and so it's incumbent upon us to be as effective as we can be. You guys have really done it. Um, is there anything else we need to understand about how Cisco is enabling these to happen? Is this, and where do we go for more information? Whatever's important there. So, go to webex.com. Uh, you'll find pretty much everything you need. Uh, Cisco.com slash collab, you'll get all the information you need. Key message is end user choice, personal choice, is enabled on these devices with centralized control from IT. So centralized control, personal choice. That's what we enable at Cisco. All right, well thank you so much, Reed. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate you educating me. All right guys, thank you so much for joining us here in collaboration. We'll talk to you shortly. And we are back with you live in studio here coming at you from Cisco Live 2019 in Barcelona. Uh, thanks to uh, Rob, great conversation with Sri Srinivasan, always a great future visionary for us and I always love those, uh, those talks with Sri. He always brings something new and interesting to the table. We're going to change gears just a little bit here. We're going to talk about Cisco cloud calling for the next few minutes and specifically we're going to ask that question, is the Cisco cloud calling platform actually worth uh, the investment in making that change to the infrastructure? Uh, you know what my answer is, but I'm not going to jump in on this. The way we're going to get to it is we're going to have a great conversation with one of our customers, this time from Haldis. Uh, this is Francesco. Yalori, Yalori. I have to Yalori, measure. right. Yalori, yes. I've got to get the, the roll and the R there. It's a good one. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you with me. Uh, Francesco is head of innovation and digital strategy for Haldis. Thank you for taking the time to do this and be a Thank part you, of it. Thank you, Steve. And uh, helping to tell your story. I always say that we can talk uh, for days and days and days about what it is that we do. Until we talk to our customers, we don't know what we do. You know what we do yeah, yeah, better yeah. than anyone else. So let's start by telling everybody what's going on with Haldis right now and in terms of how you utilize cloud calling, what sort of benefit it's been to you. Yeah, Haldis is a, sh a short to long-term rental company, so we rent apartment just for fun and also for business. So <laughs> people need to be relocated in some country like Paris or Rome or Florence and we provide uh, um, all the things that they need, not all apartment, also experience and way to go, where to go and blah, blah, blah. But we have also a short rent, uh, short rent uh, business that is dedicated to the people that would like to spend a couple of days in Florence sure. or going in a villas in Tuscany. So that's, that, that's the business. Of course we have a lot of relation with the customer and the customer like to be let me say, carried by us. So we have a, a lot of caring. If you look also our our customer testimonial, then we stay with us, they are very lucky. And they were also, they're very happy to stay with us. So we would like to maintain this connection with the customer using technology. Mm. Because I came from technology and uh, I helped the company and now Haldis to use the technology in the right way to be in touch with the customer. It's great, I actually used the Haldis service when my family and I stayed oh. in Lago de Como uh, oh. a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm still in communication with Haldis, yeah. so congratulations. We also like Garda Lake also, next time. <laughs> all right, so we'll take some more, all right, fine. I'll get in touch with you, you and I will talk. Let's talk about voice calling in the phone system. Why is that level of communication so important to the business that you create, and so important for your customer to be able to connect with you? Yeah, in the past when I arrived in the company, we, we had a legacy system that has a, a system within a company that was impossible to make some unified communication to work with 
Twit or LinkedIn or some Google things connected to the, to the phone system. So the first idea is to, to have a sort of queue uh, to make the experience that the people stay at the phone, that waiting uh, our sales representative to be better. So we need some system that has a, a queue ideas, but also supervisor ideas when we can enter, for instance, in a call when something is going wrong or some to give some suggestions. Mm -hmm. Because the people that call us are not looking only for, for apartment, but also, like you say, experience. So the idea is to move from a standard legacy system to an open system. That's why we choose uh, BroCloud and Cisco. That's perfect. So when you were making that decision between on-prem infrastructure or using cloud for the calling, that sounds like that was the real thing yeah. that, that brought you to it in the decision making. Um, what about the migration from on-prem to cloud? Yeah, we, we didn't finish yet the migration because mm -hmm. we divided two two systems at the moment. We have a, a system on-prem that we, we use to, to dialogue between, between departments also. And every connection, every relation with the customer is on the cloud. So we are moving everything on the cloud, but at the, mo at the moment only the customer relationship is on the cloud. And how has it transformed your workforce as well? Of course, because they need to be instructed about a new system. So they need to understand that when are speaking with someone at the phone, they can gather all the other information from other system. Because we receive a call from, uh, from uh, Steve, for instance, and right. Steve, I know that uh, has been already in Como Lake, and probably he likes something, and we suggest while we speak something. Uh, perfect, absolutely. Um, I, I, I wish we could continue talking for another 15, 20 minutes here. I'm sure we, there's so much more we could cover. Uh, thank you for being a part of the, the, the Cisco community here. We are thank so you. grateful to have you on board and have this great partnership going, and congratulations to everything happening at Haldis. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Steve. Francesco thank you, Lora. All right, so what we're going to do now is go back out to the show floor. My buddy, uh, Aigarimi Sabayava, is out there, and right now she's going to have a good conversation in the CME booth over in the Waz, uh, and I believe Aigarimi's got a live demo for us right now. Um, oh, workplace transformation. We're going to talk WebEx for the next few minutes, my friends. Thank you, Steve. I'm here at World of Solutions at the collaboration booth, and I'm together with Larissa Harton, the general manager of WebEx Teams. Hi, Larissa, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Really excited to be here. Thank you for being here. So, we've been talking a lot about workplace transformation today. Um, I've heard you have a great demo for us. Could you, could you explain what we do here with WebEx Teams in terms of workplace transformation? Sure, so today we're going to be looking at a demo at our new whiteboarding capability. Every day, people all over offices are using regular whiteboards in a physical location, um, using scrum boards, sticky notes, putting them on the whiteboard, and at the end of the day, it's all gone. Erased for the next day, can't keep going on with their work, and at the same time, if you're not in the room, you're really not part of the team. You really can't participate. And so I wanted to show you guys how we've really changed that experience and what we're doing moving forward around co-creation in a distributed team. Right. Thank you. Thank you, and you've got some fancy sticky notes. Are those sticky notes here? Yeah. So what we have here is our whiteboard with our new sticky notes feature. And as you can see, I have stickies just like I would have had on a regular whiteboard. I can move them around, you know, just like you would remove a sticky and put them on the other side. But these ones don't fall on the floor, so you don't have to worry about missing your work. Um, and it's really, really easy to take the board with you no matter what. But I think the best part is the fact that actually while we've been talking, there's some new sticky notes that are starting to show up and I'm not the one creating them. Oh, so who is creating that? So anyone on the team with a mobile app or sitting at their desktop can go and create these stickies and they actually contribute it to the team board. So folks that are working from home, from the coffee shop, all can take part in our scrum meeting and on this board. And when we're ready to continue tomorrow, we basically just pick up where we left off and all is well. Completely different from the whiteboard situation where if you're not in the office, you don't have the pen and the sticky, you're not part of really the participation. And so we really think we're going to change how you do co-creation and team collaboration in a much more distributed way. Sounds great. Sounds like our customers can have a scrum meeting online, right? I think it really revolutionizes the way we like co-ideate. I think it sounds amazing. Great, thank you. And um, do you also actually had, um, you know, how do we save this? Do, do I take a picture of this board, you know, because this is like quite often that's what we do in the, you know, in, in our rooms. 
Yeah, so with our boards, uh, you don't actually have to save anything. They go and automatically save. And so right here, I'm able to go into my list of different boards and I can actually pull this up from a mobile device, from an iPad, from a laptop. Anyone can really interact with the board, no matter where they are. So you don't even have to be on a big WebEx board. The WebEx boards are primarily useful because when we have a big group like this, everyone can interact just like a previous whiteboard. Wow, that sounds amazing, sounds great. And how about uh, storing this, right? So if it's like a continuous project, do we all just you know keep those photos or something? Or how can we, you know, make sure there is continuity to this topic? Yeah, so since all of these whiteboards are saved to a space, it just automatically is continuous for you and everyone on the team. So you don't really have to worry about saving, pulling up pictures, there's no pictures required. Everything is live. Amazing, sounds like all the right data would be at the fingertips. Thank you, thank you Larissa, really appreciate being here. Thanks a lot and uh, back to the studio, Steve. All right, great. Welcome back into the studio. Uh, another great conversation there. Thank you to Igarim, thank you to Larissa. The information just keeps flowing. You can see how much we are packing even into this one segment as we head toward the next innovation showcase, which we'll introduce in just a moment. But this is why we want you to stay connected here to the program so you can learn so much. And we are jumping around all over the show floor and we're bringing it all directly to you wherever you happen to be tuning in. So again, thank you. Right now, we're going to completely go a different direction. We're going to continue the partner conversation I've got Emiliano Sorrenti with me. Emiliano, Hi, Steve. thank you for coming into the studio. We so appreciate it. So, Emilio is Chief Technology Officer at Aeroporto de Roma. So now what we're going to talk about is the future of airport efficiency. It really does rely on digital transformation. We're going to hear that firsthand from you, Emiliano. So, so here's what I want to know first. Everybody has been frustrated. They go to an airport and it's not the experience that they want to have. You guys, Aeroporto de Roma, just became the number one ranked airport in all of Europe for best service experience, and that's because of your digital transformation. So number one, congratulations. Thank you very for much, For all Steve. the amazing uh, uh, work that you did to get there. And number two, how does this happen? Is there an instigating incident that sets this off, or is this part of a long-term plan? Actually, it's, it's part of a long-term plan, obviously. Uh, actually, uh, our business is about uh, uh, serving uh, 50 million passengers uh, every year. Uh, we have 1,000 flight movements uh, per day, which is like a, a departure or a landing every 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, having 100 airlines serving 200 destinations uh, on a shared infrastructure that we operate. Uh, so this complexity doesn't really leave room for mistakes or improvisation. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it is very important, the quality for us, because airlines are choosing uh, the airports who are delivering the highest uh, uh, operational efficiency to airlines and the best uh, services for their passengers. And unfortunately, I, I have to say that until 2015 or 16, uh, our position in the official rankings uh, has always been either the last one or, or the wow. one before the last one. So we were jeopardizing our future. You're saying that you went from the bottom of the list to the top of the list that rapidly? Yes, absolutely, in two years. That's the power of digital transformation. Sorry, continue. Yeah, yeah so let me say that digital is clearly a fundamental pillar, but it's not in us talking about the technology. So we worked on the entire ecosystem. Actually, the, the main strategy was to work on quality. We really wanted to be quality obsessed. And we worked on four main pillars. So the infrastructures, we have rebuilt our most important infrastructure like the baggage handling systems, for example, or a brand new pier. Then we worked on processor engineering. Then we have 40,000 people working in the airport and we have involved most of them in this journey. And last but not least, the technology, which is really the core of this uh, transformation. And technology acted as an enabler and uh, as an accelerator to achieve such a uh, transformation in a short time frame. So I'm going to actually begin with the last thing that you mentioned, that fourth pillar of the technology, but I want to end our conversation when we get to it by talking about that third pillar, the 40,000 people that you have and yes. how this all affects them. So let's talk about the nature of how the technology has helped, but specifically, why Cisco? Oh, so uh, Cisco is at the heart of our network infrastructures, uh, and uh, we put Cisco at the heart because uh, it's a, a solid foundation in order to deliver performance and reliability to the entire ecosystem. 
And the, maybe the news here is that Cisco is not only at the heart of the network infrastructure, but we are also using Cisco around the people. So we have selected uh, Cisco WebEx Teams as the tool to have the people behaving in the new way, with the quality, faster, uh, more effectively from any location they are working in that precise moment. And what does that mean for all those people working in Aeroporto de Roma? Uh, it means uh, that uh, requires uh, more focus, yep. but at the same time when you are operating in a, a more efficient organization uh, and you are proud of the results that you are achieving, uh, you see every change as an opportunity. And this is exactly what happened in our organization. This is raise all boats, a lot of strength. I'm sorry we have to cut it a little bit short. Our innovation showcase is starting soon, but uh, Emiliano Sorrenti, thank you so much, and congratulations again thank you very much. Uh, for the great recognition. We're glad to be able to talk to you. We are headed thank into our see. next innovation showcase here at this point. What are we going to talk about? Workplace transformation. So, specifically, we've got this new way of working, uh, how it helps you to really compete in our rapidly changing market. Uh, Sri Srinivasan, who was just in with Rob Boyd a few minutes ago in that conversation, he uh, got away from Rob and he went directly over to that showcase and they're rigging him up for sound even as we speak and they'll kick off in just a moment. And Sri is going to be um, uh, joined by Aruna Ravishandran and the two of them are going to talk about agility. Agility is the new currency of business today. If you are not reactive to the market, marketplace, you do not have business to bring to the market. So to be more agile, communities are transforming both the way that teams and their customers work together. It's about the team, it's about the workplace. How does that work together to deliver? So we're going to talk about a number of key trends, AI, collaboration, huddle spaces. We're going to throw it over to that innovation showcase right now. We'll see you on the backside. Enjoy. projects now that are spanning the globe in Japan and Europe in San Diego we're shooting in Savannah from Savannah we go to Cartagena from Cartagena we go to Budapest so we have productions in each one of those places that we have to collaborate with everybody every day to make sure everybody's on the same page so communication is the key to our business if I'm looking at a drawing or I'm looking at a location or I'm looking at a design of something I can communicate with the person on the spot. I can talk to the production designer. I can talk to the art director. I can talk to the editor if he's showing me something. That's important. Emails don't work for me that way. I communicate in real time. I can see what they're showing me, what they're talking about. I can make corrections, which can save me a fortune. The technology that is in my hands right now is what makes us so successful. Communication with a voice and an image, for me, is gold. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that amazing video on our collaboration technology. I'm Aruna Ravichandran, Vice President of Marketing for Cisco in the Collaboration Technology Group. I am delighted to host this wonderful panel with an esteemed set of members on the team over here. Uh, I'll start with our first panel member, Vasili Tryan. Vasili is the VP and GM for our contact center, our customer journey solutions, part of Cisco. He's been in the industry in the telecommunication space for over 20 plus years. And before coming to Cisco, he used to be the CEO for a cloud-based contact center company called Seranova based out of Austin, Texas. The next member of this particular panel is an esteemed customer. He is the CIO for Cigna. Cigna is a privately held, one of the largest real estate companies here within the European region. And France is the CIO leading the digital transformation journey across the board within the Cigna. Another customer has also joined us. So here I have on the table is Thomas Lau. Thomas Lau is the video engineering leader for Bookings.com. So Bookings.com is an online accommodation company 
It's, it started as a small private startup in 1996 in Amsterdam, and now it's a part of the larger Bookings.com company. They have 17,000 employees with a very large global scale, and Thomas Law was responsible for deploying contact center across the board into multiple different geographies at Bookings.com. And our last speaker is Sri Srinivasan. Sri Srinivasan is our senior vice president and general manager for WebEx teams, meetings, and devices. He also has responsibilities for our on-premise as well as our hybrid part of our collaboration tools. Sri is a legendary leader who is basically transforming the collaboration landscape by bringing in new innovation technologies into the collaboration canvas. He's got several decades of experience in the collaboration market. Before coming to Cisco, he spent a good amount of years at Microsoft as the general manager for Dynamic 65 part of the business, which was a part of the Cloud Assure group. That is the panel set of members we have over here. And our conversation today is going to be on the topic of workplace transformation. So with that, I first want to be able to give you a little bit of color. So there are multiple different trends which are happening in the market today. So I want to talk about four key trends in the workforce transformation place, but primarily focused on these trends specific to the European market. One of the first trends when you think about workplace transformation, it's about where you work actually becomes irrelevant. What do I mean by that? It means that it's about being able to support a global employee workforce, whether it's your customer or your partners, so that they can work remotely anywhere, anytime, on any mobile device. And so today, 19% of the workforce are remote workers. And if you fast forward and look at it in, in, in the next three years, this number is actually going to be doubled, which means that the underlying collaboration technology needs to be able to provide the same seamless experience across the board, regardless of the fact whether you work out of your home, you work on your mobile device, you're working in a coffee shop, or you're working in the office. It's all about the same, providing the same experience. The second trend is that AI is no longer a buzzword. So if you think about artificial intelligence, more and more of the collaboration technology is going to get much more smarter because it becomes an important aspect of making teams work together much more efficiently. So if you look at one of the other stats which we uncovered, 53% of organizations say that smart meeting rooms are extremely central in terms of being able to improve their business processes. And 40% of the meetings, which are now going to be facilitated, are actually going to be virtual assistant enabled. What do I mean by that? Being able to collaborate with your coworkers, with your employees, with your customers, needs to be table stakes. Joining a meeting should be a table stakes experience. What I mean by that is being able to push one button and join a meeting is not just good enough. AI technology is going to automate the entire transformation in the, in the workplace where you join a meeting by going into a room, the room will automatically recognize who you are, it'll tell you that you have a meeting coming up, and with one button, you automatically join the meeting experience, right? So the technology becomes much more smarter. Another big key trend is about customer experience. So we have heard about the word customer experience, and we experience that in every aspect within our lives. And so 25% of customers will actually abandon an online engagement if they don't have a good user experience. But if you look at 2020, that perception is going to have a major impact because it's not, people are not going to make buying decisions based upon the product or the price. They're going to make a buying decision based upon the actual experience they get when they actually go to buy the product. And the last trend is extremely important across the board because while these collaboration technologies is going to enable a lot of digital transformations across the market in terms of being able to help people to work collaboratively together, security and compliance 
becomes a very important trend across the board. So 68% of the leaders are extending their collaboration technologies in order to talk to external parties, which means that they cannot compromise the data. Whether you share your files or your data or you're hosting a meeting, all of that information needs to be extremely secure. And 50% of users are provided with mobile devices which are invisible to IT. And this in turn actually has a big impact across the board within the market. And we also know that there is a rising cost with respect to the number of data breaches which are happening in the market today. So I want to basically set the tone and talk about these four trends and start facilitating a discussion with my esteemed set of panel attendees over here. So first, let's start with you, Franz. Right? So if you think about all of these trends which I shared with you, can you give me your perspective on what customer service actually means for you in terms of your transformation journey at Cigna? Okay. Thanks for the question. Hello and servus to Barcelona. Cigna is a very fast-growing company. Over the last 15 years, we grow from three people up to 400 people now in real estate and about 40,000 people in the retail. Well, video conferencing and collaboration is a key factor for our success because we have eight offices across Europe. And the people who work in these offices together, they need to work together across these locations. We built together with Cisco a great stress-free collaboration ecosystem. Now we extend these systems with this WebEx Teams and this great WebEx board. This enables our employees to work anywhere, anytime, and on any device. But I think this is, the journey is still going on. I think the next big thing is AI and some of this uh, support thing in collaboration. So Thomas Law, right? So well, you and I have had a lot of conversations about your contact center deployment. You know, t talk to me about AI in terms of how the contact center market is actually innovating in the world of AI. Thank you for the questions. Hello, everyone. AI is like favorite topic for me. I think it's already impacting every part of our lives. Yesterday, I was going from the venue in taxi, and the taxi driver was just saying address to his mobile phone. He was not typing. So this is a very simple example where AI is already removing friction, right? It isn't too hard to imagine that a few years down the line, we will order Uber or taxi, and it's possible that it's going to be without driver there, right? So when we look for our contact center, I think there is a huge opportunity here. We are a fast-growing company, Booking.com. We have huge amount of agents, and our business is growing very fast. And there was some prediction that in a few years, we would have to have customer service of the size of the city of Amsterdam, and that is very hard to do. So what we have to do is to help our customers and help our agents to serve everyone better to increase customer satisfaction, because customer satisfaction is ultimately one of the main goals why we do our stuff, customer first, right? How can we do this? Basically, we need to automate stuff that can be automated when customer calls. If customer calls to cancel a reservation or some simple stuff, right, it would be great for customer if we can do that automatically with the bots that talk to them. That way, we can save agents for the situation where it's, they really need help. They really need some human hand to help them in the middle of the night when the hotel sold their room and they don't have anywhere to stay with, the, with their family. In the same time, for our agents, we want to help them and improve their conversation and how, to, how they serve our customers. And AI can play a huge role here by giving them tips, knowledge sharing, understanding emotions around it, and so on. Great, so picking back on the question and the answers he had, you know, as customers and uh, people's experiences and preferences are changing, how do you think that is actually having an impact in the contact center market? That's a good question, Aruna. The contact center market is shifting dramatically, a lot due to social media, because what it used to happen prior to things like Twitter and Facebook was very few people had a voice. And now with you know, the advent of social media and all these channels, 
every person has a voice and people expect to be heard regardless of their communication medium. And so what used to be driven by businesses to push you down certain avenues which become your main communication point with your, cons with your customers, whether that's voice or email, now the customers expect you to communicate with them whenever and however they want, whether that's chat, email, Twitter, Facebook, WeChat, WhatsApp, it doesn't matter. They want to be able to communicate to you across a broad spectrum of demographics. So you have everything from 80 year olds wanting to communicate via email to people like my children who don't even know what a phone call is. And so the contact center and customer service has had to adapt to that and is evolving into dealing with consumers at the level that they want, giving very personalized experiences. And it's a challenge in the market today. Shri, you know, when we were talking about all of the four trends, what role, you know, pick any trend. I actually think this applies to all four trends. In your mind, what role do you think personalization actually has to play in any one of the trends? You know, in terms of making work irrelevant, where you work irrelevant, not work irrelevant, but where you work irrelevant. So uh, let's, Aruna, I think your trends were spot on. The modern workplace, as we know it, over the continuum of time has been transforming at a rapid pace, right? So if you look at what's happening today, uh, if, you, if you go back to your first trend, it's a global workforce. It's a global market. For you at Booking.com, I don't think you think about it as just in Europe. You think of uh, business as a global canvas. So in a sense, what, what's happening is a global workforce is coming together and agility is the key word these days. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you've got a set of knowledge workers to Vasily's point of you know, a segment of our population understanding males and a segment of a population looking at a film strip and saying, what is this? This looks cool. So that's the kids' generation. So you, you've got a, di a, a wide spectrum of generations. They all have personal choices. We as humans are wired to be our own way. We, have, we make personal choices. And that personal choice, thanks to technology, is entering the enterprise workforce. Mm -hmm. So personalized collaboration for me is personal choice for end users with a rich set of controls for IT. And that's what we stand for at Cisco. Personalized choice for end users, controls from IT. So Franz, I know that you have Cisco WebEx teams you know, deployed within your organization, but I also, you have shared with me that there has been a set of pain points. You guys actually had to go through a journey in order to basically get over the pain points. What were some of the pain points you had? And what's your journey been? And how has Cisco WebEx teams actually helped you in your journey? Okay, thank you. As I mentioned before, we have a great stress-free ecosystem from Cisco with video conferencing and so on. For a couple of years, there was a missing link for us, and this was the mobile devices. People use WhatsApp, FaceTime, and Skype on the iPhone. With WebEx Teams, Cisco closed this gap, and now these tools, WebEx, video conferencing, uh, WebEx Teams, works together. But then the next pain point was how to bring these great tools to our employees. We create together with a company from Austria, with Frink, it's a, a partner from Cisco. We, have a, we, we, we make a complete new strategy for communication, onboarding, acquisition, coaching and training based on user roles and based on their needs. And it works. We go out with this new concept and the employees get really happy about this. Yeah? Real estate business is a people business and with this strategy, we address this in a perfect way. Going back to you, Thomas Law, um, what kind of ROI do you think bookings.com has actually had with the contact center implementation? I think when you think about contact center, we realize that it's enabling us to do our business. It's not cost center, it's profit center for us, right? 
although you will not hear our agents actually selling you booking while, while you call them. So that's not what I mean, meant by profit center. We understand that if you are a happy customer, you are going to come back to us. And that is why it's really, really important for us. I don't want to talk about like specific numbers, but I'll just put one. Basically, we created a team of tech, like developers, data scientists, engineers, uh, product owners and stuff, like more than 200 people are working in Booking.com on improving solutions for our customers, for our partners, and for our agents. That shows you that we see huge return of investment here because this is core of our business. So, so coming back to you over here, is that is calling a contact center getting obsolete? If yes, why? If not, why? They're both wise, okay. Yep. Um, I first want to add something uh, onto what Tomislav said. The, the trend that Tomislav's speaking about, about moving from a cost center to a profit center is a trend shifting within the customer service and the customer experience industry. It's one that people talk about, but a lot of companies don't implement. Realizing that the cost of transaction of any customer service interaction isn't the primary driver, rather than looking at what the lifetime value is of a customer. And what you're doing at Booking.com is, is just that. It's focusing on how many bookings you're going to make as a customer over your life rather than just that one transaction. And that's a key point because a lot of people talk about it. Shifting your business, driving that process change is a big effort. That's a journey in and of itself. Speaking on the voice thing, I remember back in, uh, I think it was probably 2001, the analyst came out and said, uh, voice is going to disappear voice transactions are going to decline, web chat's going to take over. And then a few years went by and voice transactions kept climbing and web chat kept climbing and then a new curve was created. It said, in the next five years, voice transactions are going to decline and web chat is going to take over. And then in about 2013, 2014, the analyst came and said, voice transactions are going to decline and social media is going to take over. What's actually happening is all mediums of communication within customer service are on the rise. What's changed is that instead of customers communicating on a single channel, it's not voice or chat or email or social, they're communicating in multiple mediums at the same time for a single interaction. So instead of just being a voice call, you may start out with a chat. Actually, you may start out with a Facebook post or Twitter and say, I'm really frustrated. Then you may pop a chat in and realize you can't solve your problem via a textual channel like chat, and then you're going to pivot and make a voice communication. So you've done three or four different interactions for one customer service interaction, whereas in previous life, you would just do one thing. That has shifted dramatically in the customer service world. So voice is still increasing. Anybody that tells you different is absolutely wrong, and all the statistics are there. What you have to think about is instead of picking what channel you want your customers to communicate you on is you need technologies that can assimilate all these different points of communication. Voice, chat, email, social. Um, you start thinking about emerging channels like WhatsApp, WeChat, Viber, and then there's things like my kids are using today, I don't even know what these things are, but there's other textual channels that they're communicating on because they think that we're old people and old people stay on Facebook and Twitter and we're going to focus on these new things but that next generation is going to use a different mechanism of channels, right? Listen to everything and then you decide as a business how you want to respond to your customers. And that's how the customer experience game is changing and, and voice is still that interaction that's rising. It's core part of any customer service interaction today. Shri, you know, we recently launched Huddle Space Solutions into the market. Um, you know, there are a zillion Huddle Spaces today but we did a, a research through, we sponsored a research through dimensional search research and we found that most of the huddle spaces which are deployed in the market have little to zero collaboration technology deployed. How do you see the innovation happening in the huddle space market? So let's talk about the problem itself, right? So huddling is a very natural human act. It's the act of just sitting around a laptop and ideating, getting near a water cooler, putting a paper napkin together and writing down your ideas and thoughts. That very human act of on an ad hoc basis getting together is the act of huddling. Now, 
with a global workforce, with a global workforce driving innovation and teams coming together, it's only natural that the huddle space needs to become digital. And like Vasily described, there's the mediums of communication are reinventing themselves. There's new forms of it coming. Video is a big one. Now in a global workforce, video becomes extremely critical. Now one of the problems is video is not as democratic as audio has been, mm -hmm. or as uh, even messaging, instant messaging has been. So in a sense, the opportunity in front of us and what Cisco has to offer is simple, intuitive, personalized huddle space experiences across the landscape of the market. So in a sense, the challenges that exist in the market today are hacked up solutions that have not scaled across the enterprise. Things like Zoom Rooms that have multiple management interfaces, multiple vendors underneath it. You know, obviously when you have, you know, uh, the management term for it is, um, you know, bring your own device type thing, but in a sense it doesn't work. When something fails, each management vendor will tell you it's not my problem, you know, talk to Zoom. So in a sense it, it becomes very hard to scale within an enterprise. And it's Wirepalooza, applying it across not only the huddle space, but into the regular meeting room. Uh, there is an inconsistency. There's a large inconsistency out there. So that's pretty much the problem space we're dealing with. And you know, for all of you guys' audience, this is a plug. We have a lot of huddle spaces for you guys to actually experience the collaboration technology all over the showcase over here. So one more question for you, Franz, is that as you onboarded new, all of your employees on WebEx teams, can you talk to us about the experience they had? Because you know you, you had a lot of pain points and you got a lot of new folks onto WebEx teams. Talk to us about the experience they had from an onboarding perspective. One of the reactions in the onboarding process was, wow, yeah, you have so great tools here in Signa and it's so easy to work together. And this is this wow effect. Yeah? We, we use and, and try to, to bring all over the company with other uh, training and, and, and collaboration matter. Yeah? But it's the wow that we create on the onboarding that we say, look at these tools, use it. It's simple, it's easy, do it. And it has the ability to work with all of the uh, existing ecosystem, right? So right. that was one of the underlying pain points. Right. So Thomas Love, another question for you. Uh, how have you improved the work environment for your contact center agents? Uh, that's a very good question. I think what we strive to is remove friction from lives of our contact center agents. If you remove friction, you will make their life easier. And their life is not easy. Being contact center agent, if anyone tried to do that, that is not easy life. So we really try to do everything that we can to simplify their life, to integrate different tools. And that is why we like Cisco, because Cisco has API first philosophy now. So we really love that we can customize stuff and integrate it. So for example, our agent have agent desktop that is integrated in CRM. It's not native GUI. Basically we customized and we did something for ourselves. These are examples where, because we realize, right, if you tap between different windows and so on, you are going to waste time and it's not going to be easy for agents to do this. But if you integrate everything and make it seamless, frictionless, that is where the win is. And that is what we are focusing on. In, at booking.com because if our agents are able to do this, then they are going to serve customer in a better way and that's going to be a win for us. So Vasily, you know, speaking about bookings.com as an example, you know, like customers like bookings.com, why do you think data is a key part of the contact center experience? What shifted in the contact center is instead of applying rules and, large, and logic to the mass and just routing transactions, we now can leverage data and adding on top of things like artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to leverage that data to provide those personalized experiences like what Shri said. So instead of putting people into groups like gold, platinum, and silver, you can now say Vasily Tryant or Aruna, and I want to give them a specific experience about the data that we've accumulated. So we can see things like half abandoned shopping carts, time you spent on a tech support page, how many times you've called in prior, 
are you on a flight that is, is leaving shortly and the plane inbound is delayed? And you can take all this data, bring it together, and then make real-time decisions within your technology about how you want to shift that interaction. And so if you think about when you make touch with the contact center, what's the first thing they say? Hi, how are you? Can I get your customer number? Can I get your account number? And you're providing them the information when the reality is we already have this data. We just have to take that data and bring it to the surface and we can make it a personalized experience. We could already see that I have bought 10 products, that I'm having trouble on a tech support uh, page trying to find a, an answer to a problem that is known. Bring that information to the front and all that data is gonna allow that customer experience to totally change. So as you go back to what Tomislav said about removing friction, remove all those easy things up front. Do some of those simple things and it will make your customers' lives easier. And think about it this way. If a business had some of the data that you had in your head about your own experiences, how would it change your customer experience with the brands that you deal with? Don't overthink it. It's actually a really simple problem. Personalize it in your own life, and that's how we can change customer experience, leveraging all this data, which is public, which is out there. So the last question is for you, Shrey. You know, instead of asking you another question, I think this audience would like to get a preview on all of the innovations we talked about, right? So AI, personalization, being able to showcase the power of making it happen. Okay. Would you be able to demonstrate for us? Absolutely. Are you guys ready to see some uh, action here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go do that. So, now I want to uh, preface by saying I'm not going to show you the same stuff. You've all seen WebEx before. This is an opportunity for us to showcase some really cool technology that we are exposing for the first time ever. So it's not just the normal WebEx canvas. So we'll start there, right? So obviously you guys know the beautiful green button called um, for WebEx. To start a meeting, you don't have to enter any phone numbers or dial uh, codes. Uh, you, all you have to do is hit the start button. So I'm going to start a meeting. And in a sense, what you're going to do is go into one of the new mediums of communication, which is I'm going to skip the, the join part, which is video. So in a sense, you will see active video as pretty much the first screen. So now, oftentimes, we enter a meeting. We want to know who all are there. Do you guys have that feeling? Who's there? Who's not there? Who hasn't joined? Uh, so it's, it's a simple click. You can look at it in video layout terms, a five by five view of first class video showing you who's there in, in the meeting. So it shows you some names. Certain people have chosen to hide their video. Uh, that's, that's quite common, right? How many of us put cello tape on top of the, the laptop? It's, it's normal, right? So the next human activity that happens is you want to figure out who's in the meeting, why are they there? Don't you have that viewpoint? It's a 30-minute meeting. Eight to 10 people show up, and the first 12 minutes is spent introducing each other. And, and then, then, before you know it, the meeting is done. What if you had a hover over that allowed you to find out more about the people in the meeting? What if you figured out where they were in the org chart within your internal, internal organization? In this particular case, we figured out that Amy's worked in Cisco. She's worked, worked through the different ranks. Uh, we know about the company. We know exactly what all she's done. You know, if she had more social profile information, you would see it. So in a sense, what we are enabling is making the meeting personal, making the meeting that much more effective so that the introductions can be passed by and we can get on with the act of actually working. Now, we don't stop there. So another part of personalized co collaboration is bringing data silos together. Integrated systems are super important for technology to fade away in the background. So let me show you the next piece of innovation, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this meeting and bring up beautiful WebEx teams that Franz talks about. Now, we've had Cisco file storage backing up WebEx teams. We all know, a number of you are using Microsoft Office. How many of you are using Microsoft Office 365 or Office? There you go. We want to make your lives better. We want to take that drab screen around Word, PowerPoint, and Excel and give it some life. So let, let's show you some of that. So first thing is, when you click this attachment, you can upload straight from OneDrive. You don't need our file systems anymore. So you can pick a document from here and upload. So I'm not going to upload this document. I've already uploaded a document. So this document is in OneDrive. So I click on it, and what happens is, within WebEx Teams, we are loading Word. So you can see that it's co-editing. So I can see Lewis Pratt is editing away. I'm not doing anything. You can see Lewis is already there. He's talking about building bridges. He's talking about Cisco as that experience per where. So you, you pretty much get integrated interop from us. We're building bridges to every other ecosystem out there. Our promise of uninterrupted work streams to our end users is part of personalized collaboration. Now, it doesn't stop there. We talked a lot about huddle spaces, right? No conversation is complete if we don't talk about huddle spaces. So we're going to join another meeting from WebEx Teams, this, in this case, same green button. And I'm going to make it full screen. So say hi to our amazing team in Oslo. So these are team members from Oslo. You, want to go, you guys want to say hi? Espen, Anne-Marie, and Tariq? Yes, sure. So hi, Sri, and everyone in Barcelona. Great to see you guys. Uh, we're joining you from Oslo here, huddled in a small room, and we're using the brand new RoomKit Mini. It's designed for uh, rooms up to five people, so you can kind of think of it as a room kit, but smaller. And this is a single screen system where people can sit very close to the screen. Uh, the RoomKit Mini has an extreme wide angle camera with 120 degrees field of view. And we can actually sit so close that we can touch the camera. Uh, with this extreme camera uh, view, we need to use the powerful RoomKit uh, hardware to straighten out the fisheye effect. So I can quickly demonstrate this by turning off the compensation that we're doing. So this is the raw camera feed, and you can see all the bent lines and curved edges of the image. So hold on, guys. This is what you get from your competition, from our competition. You want really good video. Espen, take it away. What, what do you yeah. have to fix so, this? I mean, thanks to Clever Engineering here in Oslo, we can basically use the hardware and software in the endpoint and correct the image to give a much, much better experience than, uh, than the raw camera feed. And like with the rest of the portfolio, the camera is fully automatic using the best view, so we don't have to worry about camera control. And like probably most of you guys have noticed as well, we have our name tags popping up here. So throughout the whole room portfolio, we can support those cool uh, and new AI features. We can also just quickly turn on diagnostic mode as well. And uh, so you can see uh, what's happening under the hood here. So we have our, uh, uh, our face recognition uh, uh, squares on our faces. What you see here in the gray square, that is what we're sending out to the far end. And we, of course, see people count up there in the corner as well. So we can count the number of people in a room. Yeah. Uh, to ensure an easy and flexible installation, the RoomCut Mini can be mounted either above or below the screen. Uh, it's a complete system. It's built-in speakers and uh, microphones. Everything is in one uh, unit. It's a touch display. Uh, and, of course, it can be uh, used both on-premise and cloud-based. Wow. I guess that's what we have planned to show you today uh, for now. So thank you, guys. A big round of applause for our Oslo team, if you would. And a, f a few things to keep in mind. This device is about $2,200 uh, after discounts with the Touch 10, with the, with the control. It's voice-enabled. 
And most importantly, I talked about personalized experience. Two parts of it, right? It's voice enabled. You can, it understands people. Very soon, people profiles are going to start to show up in the RoomKit Mini. Same manageability experience as the rest of our portfolio. Whether you are on a Room Series, Room 55, Room 70 Dual, exact same rich IT controls. It doesn't matter whether you're on the RoomKit Mini, which is this device that these guys are on, you get the absolute same experience. You got the share, the lower end. So our viewpoint is we are democratizing and bringing personalized experiences to every facet of the workforce. And by the way, Tariq, if you want to win that game, night to E6. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. The power of video. You can help him win. Thank you. Very much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this innovation showcase around the workplace transformation. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, we're going to stay here for a couple of minute, more minutes before the next session starts. Feel free to come down and chat with us, and we are here to happy answer any questions you guys might have. Thank you very much, and hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Welcome back to the Cisco TV studio. And now we're just going to speak. I think it was a great, great innovation showcase, and we're just going to continue the collaboration topic for a bit. I've got Alexandra Zaguri here with me in the Cisco TV studio, and she is a vice president of global collaboration sales at Cisco. Hi, Alexandra. Thank you for being here. Hi. Thank you for having me. How great was that? Yes. Wasn't that amazing? I think it shows a lot of innovation we've got in the collaboration space. Yeah, I get to work with them every day. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, Alexandra, um, could you tell us more about the whole workplace transformation trend, right? Sure. Because we hear a lot about that, but what is it exactly? Where does it come from? And you know, how has it evolved? Yeah, sure. What I love about workplace transformation is I've actually been talking about it for 15 years, right? And for me, I mean, there are different schools of thought, but for me, it started when mobility started, when suddenly the act of work could happen anywhere, because if you had a device, you could work on a plane, you could work in the car, you could work at your home. That's where it all started, right? And then, when you actually think about it, it started with just your emails, and you had the pagers, and then the Blackberries, <laughs> yeah, and the then pagers. <laughs> <laughs> and then Apple came along, and it completely blew everything up with all these apps, which actually transformed business processes. So all of a sudden, things that you needed to be in one place to do, you could do anywhere. And then, of course, it created havoc and chaos in the IT department. How are you going to manage all these workloads? What is the cloud? So this whole thing of cloud and mobility coming together completely changed the dynamic. But what I like to think about it is when you actually unpack it, what is it about? It's about experience. And it's about creating those exponential experiences so that the act of work can happen anywhere, any place, and any time. I love that. I love this. Anyway, anytime, any device, any place. It's great. I think it's exactly what my customers are looking for. Um, and Alexandra, could you tell us more about you know what are the top challenges that our customers are facing in the workplace transformation at this point, as you see it? Well, it's exactly how to deliver this experience, right? Yeah. And if you have to deal with lots of parts that don't work seamlessly together then it's not going to work. Because what is experience about? Experience has to be frictionless. It has to be automated and it has to be intelligent. And that's where Cisco comes in. Because we deliver the WebEx platform that goes across all of those things. We have WebEx calling, we have WebEx conferencing, we have devices. And we connect all of that in our collaboration world, but we're also part of a bigger Cisco. So underpinning all of that is what you've heard about today, intuitive network. And of course, all of this in a secure place. You don't want your data to go astray exactly. if you're having a confidential, be it video conference or a call. Yeah, and I think I see how we are integrating 
um, you know, our different uh, technologies there, right? As you mentioned, security. So we are also able then to integrate our security solutions into our collaboration portfolio to provide that, you know, data loss prevention and so on. And I think that's great to see. Um, so, Alexandra, how about uh, you know customers that didn't really start on this workplace transformation journey as yet? What would be your advice or you know what kind of tips for them? Sure, I think well. First of all, come and talk to us because we have you know lots of experience. We've been doing it for a long time. But what's also interesting about digital transformation? It's as much about the commercial architecture as it is about the technical architecture. So it's not just about getting all this great technology to work together. It's it's also how you're going to get me there because it costs money. And that's where our flex plan comes in. It's really how we help you do that journey to the cloud. So there's no one else in, in the industry that knows where you started, how you started, and we can take you on that solution. You can call it a transformation solution, you can stop along the, along the way and have a hybrid solution, but we are the company that takes you to the cloud with the flex plan. Sounds great. Sounds great. Um, and the last question, you know, a lot of my customers are, you know, obviously having a lot of other vendors there, and it's, of course, great that Cisco provides this end-to-end -end infrastructure for everything, but what about interoperability? And I think we've seen a lot in our innovation showcase now. Could you just highlight some of the exciting things in terms of interoperability? Absolutely. So, we are very proud of our mantra, compat and compete, right? So it's all about interoperability. And this journey that I just talked to you about is about interoperability. We completely understand that you might, you know, maybe you're working on OneDrive or you want to share, the, you know, a different type of document. What you've seen from Shri and the team today is this is at the forefront of what they're developing. They're figuring out those customer journeys and ensuring that if you want to start with one button to push, you know, from any device or any app, you can get that. You can start that conference call or you can start that video meeting, right? So we really are investing heavily in, in interoperating. We believe yeah. this is an interoperable open world and we can, you know, that's the journey we're on together with our customers. Well, I have to say that sounds fantastic. It really does. Uh, I think it really hits all of our customers' challenges. Thank you so much, Alexandra, for being here with Thanks. us. Really appreciate your time. And now we've got Nish at the Innovation Theater. Nish, over to you. Thanks, Agrim. So I'm here at the Innovation Showcase Theater, and I'm here with Vasili, who is the general manager for our contact center solutions. Hi, Vasili, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, thank you. Great, so could you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit around your role. Sure, um, like you said, my name is Vasily Tryon. I'm the Vice President and General Manager of Cisco's Customer Journey Business Solutions, which essentially is the previous contact center business unit. I run all product and engineering. Got it, and we're always talking about cloud, so why is cloud so important for the future of Cisco customer journeys? You know, it's a number of things. First off, obviously there's a, a huge trend within customers to adopt cloud solutions within their business, but also what we view it as is the ability to bring solutions, software solutions to market quicker and develop features faster that customers can adopt. Got it, and what do you mean by cloud first, but it's not cloud only? What does that phrase mean? Yeah, that's great, because when I talk about bringing solutions to the market faster, what you find is that while there's a huge trend for customers adopting cloud solutions, there's also a huge portion of the market that aren't ready or don't have the applicability for cloud. So what we're doing is we're saying we're going to develop these technologies for cloud, but we're also going to allow our on-prem technologies to continue development and leverage some of the benefits of what we're doing within the, the cloud world itself, allowing them to actually essentially work together so our customers with on-premise technologies can continue to leverage all the new advanced features that are coming out on the market. Sounds great. We've got time for one more question, which is how is Cisco going to win and lead in this space? Oh, there's, a, there's a number of ways. One, the recognition that there's not one solution that fits all customers. So the cloud first, not cloud only is one of those ways. By leveraging on-premise equipment and technologies combined with cloud, bringing together things like hybrid solutions, leveraging some of the largest partner community in the world, and we have over 35,000 customers and 3.3 million contact center agents that are waiting for Cisco to apply these technologies to their roadmaps going forward. We're going to bring all that together and we're going to win in this market. That sounds great. So one last question is, what's your experience with Cisco Live so far? Are you having a good time? 
I'm having a great time. It's been fantastic. Only been here a year, but it's an amazing family and people are extremely welcoming. Oh, welcome. It is a great company. So you're watching Cisco Live 2019 Barcelona. We'll be right back to the studio after this. Now, welcome back to the Cisco TV studio, and here we are, and now the topic is security, right? So, I think security is really top of mind of each and every customer of ours, considering a lot of the latest breaches, attacks that are happening. You open up a newspaper every day, and you see a company getting breached, right? Um, so, today we've got Bobby Guhasakar, who is our Senior Director for Security at, here at Cisco. Hi, Bobby, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, pleasure. Thanks. Um, so could you tell me more about um, you know, 